Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Mike Uzena here in beautiful St. Augustine, Florida, uh, of Menorcan Magic Handmade Castanets. What I thought of doing is a little short video today. I want to go over Dacron. Dacron has become very popular with us. In fact, most every request I get for a net now is Dacron. But I wanted to just show you a little bit about it. The, uh, the manufacturer of this one which I found to be very good. It's Cortland. Cortland's been in business over 50 years. And uh, the, the, the brand I'm using is Cortland. It's called Cortland Micron. It's fly line backing. And it's premium performance. And this is 30 pound test. That's what I basically use. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and this stuff is super strong. Uh, it is a challenge to work with, and I'm going to show you that here in a few minutes. The colors you can get, they have black, they have white. Uh, this is yellow. I swear it looks a little more green to me, but they call, they call it yellow. But uh, you can see that one. And, uh, then the other colors that I work with use, one I didn't bring in here with me, it's called Green Spot. But uh, this is uh, orange. As you can see, that's, it's a pretty orange. And then the other one that I use is, is blue. Nice stuff. Okay, with all of that said, we're going to move right on now to the actual work on this net. What I'm in the process of doing, I'm making a, uh, this will be a seven foot, uh, this is shrimp net. This will be a seven foot shrimp net. And it's going, I think, to Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, anyway, so now what I want to show you is, and Phil's going to zoom in on this, I want to show you what happens. You've heard me say many times that uh, a handmade cast net is a continuous circle. And that's what it is. You go round and round, but you run out of cord. Obviously, not, the needle's not going to hold unlimited line. You have to, you have to keep changing it. That's why I like the big needles, because I don't like a lot of knots. So, with that said, I'm, I've run out of cord, and I feel, I've refilled my needle. Now, what I'm going to do here, I do this a little different than I do with nylon, because this stuff is highly flammable. you got to be awful careful about burning this. Nylon, I can just burn it right up to the knot. Not an issue, but this stuff here, there's no telling where it's going. So, with that... I've run out of cord. You've got to see the little string here to where I have uh, run out. And I'm, I make sure that this knot is super, super tight. Okay, then I'm going to come in here. Can you see that, Phil? I'm going to come in here like this, right alongside the uh, where I run out. Because I'm just simply just going to tie back in and continue what I'm going to do. But I'm going to show you how to do that. And... Uh, With that, I'll leave a couple little tails. That's basically where I can see where I'm at because uh, in a little while, the next time I come around, I'll cut these off. You'll cut them off right up to the knot. Be very careful. You want to cut them off right to the knot. But for now, the way I tie back in, I'm just going to throw a simple loop. Come in here, bring that down, catch hold of this, and pull it nice and tight. See, I'm pulling a good strain on that. Get it nice and tight. And I'm ready to continue on with this net. And that's what I'm going to do. I want to knit a little bit on this, not too long, just to show you. I'm going to come in here. I've got to get, get my gauge back in place here. All right, then I'll catch my fingers and I'll hold these little lines out of the way so I don't get them, catch them up and tie them into the... Uh... And this is the last row. Uh, you have a widening row and you have two plain rows. This is the second of the two plain rows. So what I'm going to do basically here, I'm going to just knit a little bit. I want you to see that this stuff, and I don't, I don't, uh, I just plug along, I guess all I can tell you. But this stuff has a tendency, oh, that silly telephone, is, it did us that once before. Oh, my goodness. Hey. All right, excuse us for the okay. interruption. I should, that's the second time that's happened to us. That silly telephone ring. That's okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to continue this thing and 
what I'm going to do is this stuff has a tendency to curl up. Exactly. These meshes have a tendency okay. to curl up. And when you grab it, it ain't there. But, uh, but anyhow, this is... Uh, uh, okay. And these, it, these tie are really, really tight knot. One thing about this thing, and they don't slip. The beauty of this thing, one of the complaints that I'm getting, hearing from these guys that are calling me, emailing me from a lot of people now from around uh, the Carolinas, over to the West Coast, Texas, uh, Alabama, uh, Florida, Mississippi, a lot of guys around Pensacola, they're mullet fishermen. And uh, since they can't, they can't gill net anymore. They've outlawed gill netting some years ago, back in the 90s. And so what they do is they've, they've gone to uh, catching a mullet with, uh, with cast nets. And their big issue they're having uh, with, with the monofilament nets, they're machine made. You know what machine made is? They take flat, uh, they take flat webbing, and cut it into panels, and they sew it together. But the issue with it is where they sew it together, the knots come loose and the things start coming apart on them. All right, now I'm gonna stop just a second and show you something. You saw me where I tied in, but to make absolutely sure, I'm gonna bond this knot where it's never gonna come loose. You're never gonna have a problem. Take a little bit of uh, clear fingernail polish and uh, I'm gonna dob that knot, and that when when that seals you, you well, you wouldn't untie that knot anyhow, I don't think. But but anyway, that's the way I've been doing it. Every place I tie a knot, when I run out, I do that to make sure that uh, uh, we're gonna have a good tight. I don't like, I don't want anything coming loose on any net I make. That's for sure. All right. I, let me continue on with this, and I want to finish it. I got far to go, but I want to show you one more thing. As you can see, I try. I don't waste a lot of time, but I'm not burning it up right now. I'm just, just. I guess you just call it loping along, and uh, you have to, you know. And every now and then, I have to stop and and uh, that, that line. It hadn't done it yet. Thank goodness, but. It'll get up underneath it, and I gotta physically stop and pull it on uh, the mesh out where I can pick it up. Now, as far as how much line you put on this gauge, uh, that's 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 nothing sitting in uh, concrete on that. I usually uh, put about uh, oh, maybe two inches. If that, depending on uh, what kind of a mood I'm in anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I should left myself a little more than I intended. It's taking a little bit longer, but you need to see this. You need to see how this goes. I'll slow down and show you this thing. Uh, the, this is called, uh, these knots, they're talking about, uh, they. Uh, if, if you go on, like, call this thing the Flying Dutchman. I don't know about any Flying Dutchman, where they got that name from. But I can tell you for a fact, this knot that I'm using, I know is over 500 years old. That's how long they've been using this knot. Now, our Minorcan ancestors came here, settled in St. Augustine for good in 1777. Uh, and uh, they were using this knot. Plus, they were using the old knot we call the old Spanish knot, which was a simple, and I don't like using it, simply where you pick up a mesh like this, and you pull it down, and you throw a loop, and you come in between there, you come in between there again. I do it twice. That, that will tie a decent knot. That'll tie a pretty good knot, but it's slow. But uh, that's the way the, a lot of the early Menorcans, my father, he never used nothing. That's the knot he always used, but he only tied it one time. He didn't double tie it. Now, you come around that little finger, so I'm throwing that loop, come in between that loop that's around my little finger, I pick up that mesh, and I pull it down tight, and I don't let that go till I feel tension. 
when I feel that line pulling against that little finger is when I let it go. And uh, but so anyway, that's the way we do that. They call it the Flying Dutchman, the old Menorcans, they call that the new knot, whatever, or English knot. The English use this knot. The Spanish use that other knot. You know, there were a lot of flags under, uh, Florida was under, uh, what, six or seven different flags? The two biggest were the, were the uh, English and the uh, Spanish. All right, I'm just about, just about to finish this up. And we're gonna terminate this thing. I just wanted you to see a little bit and then see that I'm still alive anyway. <laughs> I haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks, but uh, I like people to see. I'm going to slow down again. All right, I'm gonna see how I'm holding this thing. You want to keep this tight too, by the way. When you're knitting, you want to keep that net tight. Uh, if you don't, it, it'll have a tendency to get out of shape on you. So keep it tight. Well, I'm going to come around that little finger, slow motion. See how I throw that loop. I come back. Go in between, Don't you come through from this outside. You don't come around any other way. See what I'm doing, I'm coming around in there, I'm gonna pick this mesh up, pick that mesh up like that, and I tie it. All right, we're just about to finish this row. Now I'm gonna show you the next really important, important step in your uh, continuous circle that we talk about, and that's what this is. This, I started with one mesh up there, and you see where I'm at. Start with 42 in the top, and and now I'd have to I'd have to take my calculator and count them, but uh, because what happens every third row, every third row I'm adding. See little things that happen, you have to pick up and straighten that out. So what happened, that thing double back on me, it'll do that. That loop goes around the back side, it goes on the other side of this gauge, and if you don't pick it up, you're gonna have a, a humongous mesh to untie. <laughs> and you don't wanna untie this stuff, believe me. This is hard to, okay, I'm to the end now. A little slow. The last step. All right, so you want to get a good close-up of this one. Now, what I'm going to do, I've, I've finished I've finished that row. We call that a row. I don't know if he can see these two knots. See how, how they're even? Hold it steady. You got that? Yep. Okay. You can see the two knots. You got, you got the knot from the tail. Here's the tail. I'm sorry. Wrong side. There's your tail, and there's your line off your needle. I'm gonna pull them together. I'm gonna keep them that way. And now here's a, this is so important. You want to keep this last mesh the same size as all those others that I just went around that net. All right. Now, uh, you can see what I'm doing. Did you, did you pick that up good, Phil? It's just nothing but a knot. That's simply what I did. I mean, I could go back and do that. Should I do that in slow motion? No, I got it. I got, you got it. it. Okay. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep these things even, as you can see. And I visually look at that. I've done so many of them. I can just look at it. Or you can take your gauge like this. You see what I'm doing? But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you them how I got that almost a little bit too much. I'm going to give that a good, a good pull. Pull it back a little bit because I've tightened it up too much. Because I want that the front of that knot to be right up on the front of this damn gauge. All right. See what I got there? Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Hold it. See what I got? I'm gonna put this mesh board in in there. See those two knots? They're right on the leading edge. They're not above the leading edge. They're not behind it. They're dead on it. You want it right dead on the center of the leading edge of this mesh board, whatever, whatever size you're going to use. And we're ready to go. We're ready to continue on 
to the next, uh, and I'm just going to tie just, just a few matches here and quit. Uh, so I think I've got my point across to you, is I'm going to start, restart this thing, as you can see what I'm doing. Now you see how when I pull that down, how they're even? That's what you want to see. This is a winding row coming up. So I'm going to put in, show you how to put in a winding, and I'm going to quit. And that's all you need to see. But you guys that, that are learning and, and buying the videos and making these things, you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, now I do is I count. I'm ready for a widening. The, the widens on this net, when I first started it, the first widening row, they were three apart. Now, they're 30. So, with that said, I'm going to put the wide in. Now, here's how you put your wide in. Go slow. Can you see that? Can you see that wide in? I'm pointing at it. I've got the needle point right on that wide in. You got a good view of it, Phil? Yep. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get right in line with that, and that's where you want to put it. Your next one, I'm going to come right in underneath it, directly in line with it. And the only way that can happen is if there's two plain rows between winding rows. That's the only way you're going to be right in line with it. So that's the important part of it. And I'm going to just bring this down. You don't pull this down because what we're doing, we're adding an extra mesh. And we're going to do this 14 times. So every third row, and I double tie this, every third row, this net is, is gaining okay, hold it right there. 14 meshes. Let's see if I can get that loop. Okay. And I'm going to tie that. Okay. And what I would do now if, to continue working on this thing, I, I count. I concentrate on what I'm doing. You can't do anything else. And I've had people, well, I can, I can sit down and watch TV. Uh, I had a cousin. <laughs> then I taught how she wanted to make a net. I'm an orphan girl. She wanted to make a net to hang up on a wall. So I showed her how to make the net. And... Uh, Anyway, so what I would do, I would just start continuing right on. Okay, I'm going to quit for now. And uh, when you finish that story about, about uh, Sandy, she she took and uh, she made a net. She wanted it five foot, so she made a net. When she finished it, she come around here and she said, uh, I want you to help me put the sinkers. Show me how to put the sinkers on. I said, well, I'll put them on there. Forward by the time I showed you, I could do it. So anyway, so I told her, I said, I started getting the stuff ready. I said, uh, count the meshes around the bottom of that net so I know how many sinkers we need. So she counted them. She tells me, she says, give me a count. I said, that's impossible. Well, I said, it's, it's got to be more than that. I said, you must have made a mistake. Count them again. So she did. The same thing, me not believing her. I counted them and it come up just like her. It was a hundred mashes short. That net wouldn't open. That size, it wasn't no way you could fish with it. It, would, it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't, you couldn't get it to pancake out like it should. But it didn't make any difference because she's going to hang it on the wall. But I asked her, how in the world did you make so many mistakes? Oh, she said, I was sitting down watching TV and I had it in my lap. I said, okay, that's the answer to it. But anyway, enough with the stories. Uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, communicating with me, we have a website. Uh, it's uh, Men Menorcan Magic, M E N O R C A N M A G I C dot com. We have a website. You can find us on YouTube, where this will be. Uh, and and uh, the email addresses, the, if you're interested in the net, uh, you know, you can pay right on the website or up, just as soon as I have a check. but. But uh, anyway, the price is normal, and, and uh, uh, I hope everybody's staying safe and taking care of yourself. Summer's coming on, and I'm starting to get busy. And anyway, I've got to finish this, and that'll be seven foot, and I've got a seven, uh, eight foot mullet net to make for, for somebody. So anyway, uh, for goodness sake, take care of yourself until the next time. Uh, take care.